Hello, you're probably wondering what I'm doing standing out here in the middle of Paint Creek. Well, I'm Michelle, our cat Palermo. I'm head of the Freshwater Forum at Crabrook Institute of Science. And I have been participating in a uh, river water quality monitoring program since 2003. And this is the original location that I first started doing water quality assessments. The best way to do a water quality assessment is to look at the life that lives in the bottom of a lake, river, or stream. So I have with me a D-net. This is my tool that I'm using today. Drop the net in the water. Then you start kicking it. We call it the benthic boogie. You start kicking the bottom of the stream. What I'm doing is I am aggressively shuffling the gravel. What it is, is it's causing anything that's in the bottom of the creek to come up out of the bottom and up into the water column, column, and then slowly drifts into my net. Take a look. Oh, I do have one organism. Diphthera, it's a type of fly um, that is in here. So why exactly am I looking for bugs in the bottom of the river? Well, what they do is they tell us the story of water quality. Some insects that live in the water don't care what the water quality is like. Think of things like leeches. They don't care if there's pollution, how much oxygen, whether the water is warm or cool. They'll just live in just about anything. Then you have your middle of the road species, such as damselfly nymphs and dragonfly nymphs. They kind of tell you, ah, it could be polluted, maybe it's not polluted, poor water quality, medium of the road water quality, or maybe even high water quality. You have your type 1 organisms. They're the ones that indicate to us a high quality water system. Typically a cooler body of water, such as Paint Creek as I'm standing in today. High oxygen, again, much like Paint Creek that I'm standing in today. These are our caddisflies, our mayflies, and our stoneflies. And if I consistently find those organisms season after season, year after year, then we can say that we have a pretty good water quality system. I did several different dips with my net to figure out what type of organisms we have to hopefully give an indication of what kind of system. So why don't you follow me up to my bucket of bugs and let's see what I found out here today. Okay, just to familiarize you with some of the technical tools that we use. Dish pan from the dollar store. Plastic spoon, preferably white, but I didn't have any white ones at the house today. And a dinner plate from home today, but white really helps the insects stand out. So first thing I do is I dump part of my sample in the bin here and I let any dirt or sediment kind of settle out so the water's nice and clear. All right, so I'm gonna use my trusty spoon here to help me collect an organism. Here we go. This right here is a scud, a freshwater shrimp, so to speak. They don't get much bigger than this little guy, so don't plan on eating these for dinner here in Michigan. Some other of the other insects that I got uh, here is a dragonfly nymph. So what a lot of people don't realize is that the nymph stage of a dragonfly lives in the water for a number of years. And then it floats up to the surface, it metamorphoses into a flying insect, uh, mates, and then dies within usually a couple of weeks. Also related to the dragonfly is what we call a damselfly. And da this is the damselfly nymph. Notice that its abdomen is much longer than the dragonfly. Again, they live, the nymph stage lives for years in the bottom of uh, some sort of bot wat bot body of water. Um, and then flows up to the surface, metamorphoses into a flying insect and mates and then dies a short time later. You can tell dragonflies and damselflies when they're adults um, from each other, even though they look very similar. 
When a dragonfly lands, it leaves its wings wide open, whereas when a damselfly lands, it closes its wings. Another type of insect that I found is what we call a casemaker caddisfly. It might not look like an insect, but this is actually the outside of the housing or what you call the case of this insect. And the insect itself is inside. I'm gonna leave it like that, maybe it'll pop out. You can kind of see its legs start. And I, oh, there you go, now it's starting to crawl out. Different types of case maker caddises make different types of cases. So different species make different types of cases. This one made its house or case out of sticks. This is another one here. Um, these are tiny little twigs that this case maker made its home out of. And there's a number of different types. Some of them might look like clamshells made out of tiny grains of sand. Others make theirs out of leaves. So our casemaker caddis flies indicate high water quality. We consistently find these in Paint Creek along with stone flies, which I didn't find any today, but it is springtime and the best time to find stone flies is January. I'm not gonna make an actual assessment of this water body based on the sample. I didn't follow the exact protocol. My whole point was just to show you that there are small things that live in the bottom of creeks. Although Paint Creek is considered a very high quality water system, it does support a trout population, has a lot of oxygen, it's typically very cool water, and it is one of the most precious resources here in Southeast Michigan. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today and taking a dive down into Paint Creek and seeing what lives on the bottom.